Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is so wonderful to see you all back here again. Thank you to those who are joining us online. My name is John Anderson, and I'm the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs at Eastern. We're here to hear President McMahon's inaugural Welcome Back Address, and I hope afterwards you join us for the traditional Pass Through the Pillars event on our lawn, front lawn in front of Showalter Hall. <laughs> Thank you for that rousing applause for the Pass Through the Pillars. This is an amazing time of year. This is one of my most favorite times of year. The students are back on campus and the energy is palpable. You can feel the hope, you can see the energy, you can see the dreams as we step into this upcoming year. And beyond it being welcome week for our students, as many come back onto campus, I would also make sure to mention that it is Hispanic Heritage Month, a month where we recognize Latinx Hispanic communities and the contributions they make to our community. Our university is hosting many activities and many events throughout the campus. Please make sure to grab a flyer that's sitting out in the lobby outside of this auditorium or look for other ways that it is being circulated, including our probably the first one, which is a pizza party, so free food, hosted by Chaconic Studies in Monroe 205 on September 27th. And now I'd like to welcome Director of Travel Relations, Aaron Ross, who will be giving today's land acknowledgement. Oh, I do have to bring it down a little bit. Thank you, Provost. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's great to be here. For those of you who don't know me yet, uh, my name is Aaron Ross. I am the Director of Tribal Relations, and I am Stupumuk. Uh, I belong to the Seekers of Spiritual Medicine, also known as the Cowlitz Indian Tribe. Here at Eastern Washington University, we recognize that Washington State shares geography with over 29 tribes, many of whom have students here at Eastern Washington University. This also includes First Nations and Alaska Corporation uh, members as well. Um, we believe in being good partners, and we believe in knowledge sharing here at Eastern Washington University. And it's so it's important to understand the history and where we're at, the land that we are on um, from which we are earning our knowledge. Eastern Washington University resides within the traditional homelands of the Spokane people and other tribes who are connected through their shared history of this region. This land holds their cultural DNA and it is their ancestors who are here and bring forth the knowledge of this place the knowledge that comes from the land. Have a great year. I would like to welcome Dr. Sherry McMahon to the stage. We look forward to Dr. McMahon building on the success at Eastern and moving our institution forward in very positive directions. She's had amazing conversations with both internal and external constituents, and I know she's looking forward to these additional opportunities. 27th president at Eastern Washington University, Dr. Sherry McMahon. Thank you so much for being here, those in person and viewing online as well. It's been said before, and I'll say it again, it is a great day to be an Eagle. I just love that. And in fact, I said it just Saturday as we welcomed our students to the Cheney campus, and a few weeks ago when we welcomed our semester students in Spokane. I always enjoy the start of a new academic year. There's always new people to meet, the opportunity to build new connections, and new opportunities for personal growth. This year will be full of firsts for me and our new students, and I look forward to listening, learning, and growing together. 
My goal as a new president is to be visible and engaged as often as possible. See, I taught group fitness for over 25 years, so sitting in an office all day is not my style. I like to be active and moving. I'll take a walking meeting over a conference room any day. So since moving here, I've had an opportunity to explore the outdoors a bit. The Turnbull Wildlife Refuge, Fish Lake Trail, Bolin Pitcher, the Spokane River, and of course, becoming acquainted with our community of squirrels here in Cheney. <laughs> I hear they have their own Twitter account as well. I've already been warned about the winters, and I'm a little nervous to be driving in the snow for the first time. But I am going to lean into this, so maybe I'll even try snowshoeing. <laughs> and like many of our students, I am a first-generation college student. Yay! <laughs> I found my passion in teaching and served as a faculty member and administrator for 16 years at California State University Fullerton. I then moved to California State University San Bernardino, where I served as their provost and vice president for academic affairs for six years. When the opportunity arose to move up here and become president, I was ready. The campus and the values of Eastern excite me. And moving out of pandemic conditions, there's a great opportunity to focus on building a stronger and healthier campus. I'd like to take a moment and thank the EWU Board of Trustees for their support, confidence, and trust in me to lead Eastern. Could our Board of Trustee members that are here please stand? Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Perriman Gilman, Trustee Murphy, and our student trustee, uh, Jessica Donner. Thank you so much for being here. Since arriving in the last week of June, I've been able to take part in some great community events. On day one, I helped out at HoopFest as EWU was the official diversity, equity, and inclusion sponsor and saw right away the incredible impact our campus has on this region. Our adaptive athletics wheelchair basketball team played on center court. I visited the STEM mobile we sponsored, and numerous alumni would walk by and say, go Eags, and I learned to say, go Eags. <laughs> it really drove home the fact that Eastern's 140-year legacy is still alive and thriving. And a couple weeks later, I had a great time at the Cheney Rodeo and Parade, getting out and meeting alumni and community members, such as the mayor of Cheney, Chris Grover, and West Palms Lake, uh, West Palm Plains Chamber Director, Mark Loesch. They're here to today, will you please stand? Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your hospitality. And since then, I've been on numerous tours and introductions. We traveled to the Tri-Cities and held a roundtable session, met with elected officials at the local, state, and federal level to establish partnerships, and found, as always, a spirit of collaboration and connectedness. Over 140 years, EWU has had a profound impact on students, faculty, and this region. Alumni, fans, and future Eagles know that Eastern shows up for not just our students, but invests in our community. I want to thank the Cheney, Spokane, and Tri-Cities community members, alumni, and donors who have made me feel so welcome. And as much as I've gone out this summer, there remains to be much to learn about the current state of our university. 
I knew coming out of the pandemic as a new president, it was important to get a real view on what challenges students, faculty, and staff are facing and hear the hard feelings. We are living in historic times. Rebuilding after a global pandemic is new for everyone, not just Eastern. And there is a lot of hurt and pain that we all have, and we have to acknowledge it before we can move forward. The results of a series of listening sessions with varied staff, some faculty, as well as an all-campus survey weren't easy to read, but it was necessary and lent validity to our next steps. We heard what was being said, and we are on a path to address those challenges. I also really appreciated the opportunity to meet with our faculty organization chair, Frank Lynch, and the faculty organization executive team to begin to build that important connection with the faculty here. Their input is, in, is valuable as we move forward. Will the faculty organization executive leadership team please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Frank, and thank you, team. I must add here that our faculty did an extraordinary job with challenges of teaching and navigating higher education requirements during the pandemic. And I could not thank them enough for their patience, flexibility, and perseverance during that time. Will all the faculty that are here please stand and be recognized? We appreciate you. Thank you. And of course, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the staff who took on more work and felt more siloed, not always getting necessary information timely. Will the staff please stand and be recognized? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We all made it through, but no matter how well we transitioned, we also, we also experienced some sort of loss. For many, it has been difficult to reconnect with one another, so reestablishing and rebuilding will take some time. From the listening sessions and meetings, there are many individuals on campus that are still feeling the isolation that COVID and virtual learning brought on. We also heard that communication was fractured and there was a need for more transparent decision making. These are things that we are working on. And like organizations everywhere, the strain of tight budgets and low staffing have had a detrimental effect on the morale in departments. As we begin the new school year, I know that the listening is not over. My goal is to meet with every department over the coming months. The ideas and discussions that take place will really help to drive the decisions our leadership team will be making and lay the foundation for our 2023 strategic plan. EWU is not alone in these struggles. They are being felt by universities across the nation, but we can overcome our immediate challenges and find long-term operational sustainability and success. We will rebuild the EWU experience and we will do this together. I know this is possible because according to our all-campus survey across students, staff, and faculty, campus community was ranked as the number one strength of EWU. This feedback was so important, and I want to thank all those that participated in the surveys. It is clear that we share the same passion for EWU, and that is excellence. So, if we boil it down, we have three areas that have to be addressed immediately. Our enrollment is down, and this affects nearly every facet of university life. 
This will be reversed, but it will take strong efforts by everyone. Please remember, enrollment is not just about the recruitment of students, but their retention from year to year until they graduate. Budgets are tight. We're doing all with more with less, and we will need to prioritize our investments to maximize value. And of course, we can improve morale. How do we go all in for our students if we struggle to be all in ourselves? I want to pause here for a second and pivot from Eastern to the British cycling team. I know you're thinking, why British cycling team? <laughs> Something to do with Queen Elizabeth? <laughs> no. <clears throat> because up until 2003, the British cycling team never made headlines. Their cyclists had won only one gold medal since 1908, and they hadn't won a Tour de France in over 100 years. In fact, bicycling manufacturers didn't want to sell the team bikes because they worried that the, about being associated with the British cycling team and how it would impact their sales. However, in 2003, Sir Dave Brailsford was brought in to be the team's performance director. In a few short years, the British cycling team won 16 gold medals over two Olympics and brought home seven Tour de France in eight years. And this wasn't because they got a new team and they didn't get any new bikes. It was because Sir Brailsford introduced the theory of marginal gains, or rather, the aggregation of marginal gains. The theory posits if you keep your foundation but make incremental shifts in behavior, in environment, in processes, the end result is monumental success. As he says, forget about perfection, focus on progression. So the cycling team started to make small changes. They redesigned the bike seats to make them more comfortable. They used sensors to monitor how the athletes responded to certain workouts. They changed racing suits to be lighter and more aerodynamic. And then further, they hired a surgeon to teach them how to wash their hands to help reduce the chance of getting sick. They brought their own pillows while traveling to promote better sleep and even painted the inside of their van white to better catch dust and debris before it could affect the performance of the bikes. Together, these small shifts created historic, dominant cycling team. Okay, back across the pond. As a new president, I really connected with this story and see it as a frame for the upcoming year. It's important to me that we not chase perfection as we look at the challenges ahead, but we, instead we focus on progression. Where can we make marginal gains to achieve lasting success? And in looking at Eastern's creed, grit, grace, greatness and gratitude. By making marginal gains in each area, we'll create lasting success for EWU. We first begin with grit, drawing upon our passion and inner strength to create change. Starting in 2023, we will be crafting a meaningful, dynamic, five-year strategic plan that captures the legacy of EWU and builds on the foundation to keep moving us forward. This plan will not be rushed. We have so much to learn still and need to continue listening, and it will take lots of conversations. Our beginning point is that we already have staff that are dedicated to student service. Our faculty are well-respected and committed to making our students ready to thrive, and our community is strong. Through continuous collaboration, we will identify where we need to be and how we will get there together. Part of the discussion will include a forum in October for our staff and faculty 
on the topic of cultivating a positive culture and reconnecting. We all have a shared desire to improve the campus culture and address feelings of isolation and communication silos. This forum will provide an opportunity to have a moderated, honest discussion to help build trust, improve morale, and close remaining gaps in communication. We will also be providing a forum to discuss the decline we are seeing in enrollment, especially as we begin steadily to recover from the pandemic. As I mentioned before, this decline was felt across the nation in two and four year colleges, and we will need to take a strategic approach to reverse this trend. We will need bold and innovative plans across multiple departments, and we will need to be all in together. And we will also continue to work on our multi-year comprehensive campaign to ensure organizational stability. I want to thank our donors, our alumni, and those who, despite a pandemic, prioritized giving to Eastern. And to our wonderful advancement team, thanks to your hard work, we are nearly halfway to our current goal and expect to go public soon. You give them a hand. Some of our campaign initiatives have already seen great success, including Eagle On, student scholarships, and support for our Catalyst Building. Other initiatives, such as the Prairie Restoration Project and Stadium Renovation, are picking back up after the pandemic. And there's a lot of excitement around here for our four-year nursing program, an opportunity, yes! <laughs> So just to share with you, just as you just did, I recently spoke to a group of high school counselors that were on our campus for a workshop. And when I mentioned the nursing program, they broke out in applause. This is a great draw for Eastern, and we look forward to supporting the program as we welcome the first cohort next fall. Yes. This year, we will also be engaging with the state legislature with nine aggressive requests to ensure progress with our operational sustainability. We often talk about state funding as the second leg of the university's stool. You have student tuition, state funding, and private donations. In the past, Eastern has received substantial support from our state including over $130 million for STEM facilities and programming. However, state support is not what it used to be, so we must be very strategic in our asks. This year, our requests are focused on creating funding sources to address faculty and staff needs, along with investments in student success. We know that we will need to prioritize based on the results and take a hard look at want versus need. And we encourage those who are interested to engage with the upcoming legislative session. Ultimately, our work is focused on one goal, and that is to make sure that the Eastern student experience is cohesive, connected, and impactful. To that end, EWU is bolstering our focus on providing a diverse, welcoming campus for all, enhancing access to higher education for traditional college-bound students, non-traditional students, and those from underserved populations. Eastern has been recognized as a top school for diversity in Washington State. Over 40% of our incoming students are first generation, and over 50% of our incoming students come from diverse backgrounds. That's great. This ensures that classrooms have robust, challenging discussions, our student activities are well-rounded, and together we work toward positive social change. 
And like our provost, Dr. Anderson mentioned earlier, in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we have developed some events that will make not just our newest students, but all students, faculty, and staff feel welcomed. Celebrating various heritage events will continue throughout the year and help demonstrate our commitment to incl inclusivity and lifting up diverse voices. We were also very proud that just a few days ago, Eastern won the 2022 Rainbow Alliance and Inclusion Network Outstanding Agency Award. We are only one of three state agencies to receive this award this year, which recognizes our work to create a safe, welcoming, and inclusive environment for LGBTQ plus employees. Good. We, are con we are continuing our work toward the designation of EWU as a Hispanic serving institution. And for an institution to qualify as an HSI, we must have at least 25% of our, uh, our student population um, Hispanic. And this was a stretch goal to be reached in 2023. However, with the pandemic and the decreased numbers of students of color attending college, this timeline will likely be extended, but certainly continued. We are also continuing to invest in STEM programming EWU has produced more STEM graduates than any other regional university in Washington State. We are one of only three programs in the nation with a research facility on a national wildlife refuge. And the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the NSA have designated Eastern as a national center of academic excellence in cyber defense. Our Office of Sustainability has built strong community partnerships to build on our environmental and health goals, including a food pantry, prairie restoration, and campus community garden. We all have a part to play and ensuring our resources are protected for future generations. And I'm very proud of our students and partners who have gone all in on these sustainability measures. And our School of Education continues to be a key contributor to the region's educational system. PK through 12 teachers play critical roles in our society, and we proudly continue our legacy as a top teaching institution. Every program, every department is making an impact on our region and our country. The stories are endless. Our students, staff, and faculty are achieving greatness. With our commitments to listening, learning, growing, and innovating, we are and will continue to recapture the identity of what it means to be an Eastern Eagle. Being an Eagle is about social mobility. Eastern is ranked number one in the state on CollegeNet Social Mobility Index. Our, yes. Our graduates obtain marketable degrees for high paying jobs. They don't just move on, they move up and promote generational change and contribute to our region's economic vitality. And being an Eagle means getting a high quality education at an affordable price. EWU has the lowest in-state tuition of any university in Washington State. <laughs> this is a significant value proposition for our many students who struggle financially. And being an Eagle means immersion in experiential learning. We provide workforce development opportunities and hands-on learning for our students, whether through meaningful internships, research projects, or other activities. 
These experiences promote student, faculty, and community collaboration as a key driver of positive regional change. I think it's fitting to end with gratitude. My leadership team and office staff have been instrumental in welcoming, welcoming me to Eastern these past two months. I have high hopes for what we will be able to accomplish, the positive gains that we will make together and our ability to challenge each other to be better. I'd like to invite my team and our office staff here today to stand and be acknowledged for your work. Please stand. Thank you. When you come to Eastern, whether as a student, a staff member, or faculty, you become an eagle for life. You become part of the 140-year legacy of this institution, from its roots as Cheney Normal School to today's Eastern Washington University. You become part of the story, the family, and its future. And as the 27th president, I am honored to become part of this institution and honored to be an eagle. And as the campus comes alive these last few days, I encourage you to take part in an eagle activity. Come see an upcoming theater production in the fall. Attend a soccer, volleyball, hockey, or football game. Join us at a multicultural festival in October or attend any one of our upcoming musical events. There is something for everyone happening at EWU. And in a few minutes, we will welcome our incoming students to the Eastern family as they participate in Pass Through the Pillars tradition, an official welcome to the university that will embrace them, guide them, cheer with them, and support them as they pursue their passion. I hope you will all join me at the pillars and the barbecue to give a warm eagle welcome to our newest students. Thank you again for joining me here today. It really is a great day to be an eagle. Go Eags! <laughs>